21 rats hanging in a window or rowers has been killing rodents for over a century. These sewer rats were caught back in 1925. And today, business is booming, or if you prefer, multiplying. Hello and welcome to Environment. This week, we're looking at the invasive species that are taking over our towns. You'll see that bed bugs are biting all over New York City, munching into more than mattresses. The nocturnal parasites are crawling all over clothing stores and dining out in luxury hotels. Hotels. And they've hit Paris too. Along with cockroaches and mice, they make up the bulk of the pests that are proliferating and hard to get under control. One laboratory here is looking at how to kill them with communication. We'll be finding out how before turning towards another means of reducing the amount of insects in our environment and at the same time possibly finding a partial solution to falling food reserves. <laughs> Well, the 19th century shelves here hold very 21st century poisons. Insecticides have got less toxic over the years, a move made to protect our health and the environment. But the milder mixes are less effective on certain pests. We're going to cross now to the United States, where last year around $250 million was spent battling bedbugs. Only around the size of an apple seed, these are a huge problem. For Camilla and her owner Eric, this is not time for a walk, but for work. Uh, people get uh, very upset. People try to, they want us to be very discreet. They don't want any signs of us uh, going down the block, <laughs> stating that we're here to find bed bugs. Uh, are you ready to go to work? Ready? Camilla is trained to sniff out bed bugs. New York City apartments like this one have reported a 240% increase in bed bugs, and the infestations keep on rising. A scratch girl, marks girl. the spot. Come here, come here, come here, good girl. Uh, that is a positive indication. That's a case where she's been sniffing a bed. She scratches uh, where she is uh, detecting the problem, which in this case is the mattress box from the area. Bed bugs have been spreading across New York and other U.S. cities, encouraged by a long, hot summer. They are immune to available pesticides and are hardy, able to go several days without food. And they travel well, too. This Manhattan underwear store reported an infestation Nike's flagship store on Fifth Avenue had to be temporarily closed, and teen clothier Abercrombie & Fitch are among dozens of businesses hit. That led New York City Council to worry about the cost to businesses. Councilwoman Gail Brewer has been pushing the city to wake up to bed bugs for years. The stores, I don't know if it's the trucks, if it's the warehouses, if it's coming from other parts of the world. Nobody really knows. Camille's owner Eric thinks it's New Yorkers themselves who are spreading the bugs from home to work. Whatever it may be, they're very good hitchhikers. What we've learned with bed bugs is they do have a survival mechanism and they seem to have a brain power that ensures their survival. The spread means lots more work for Camille, but unfortunately lots more sleepless nights for New Yorkers worrying about where the bugs will bite next. Well, after looking at what's biting in the Big Apple, we turn now to the worst known pest of the palm tree. It's the red weevil. It's just been spotted in California where it's putting pressure on what's become somewhat of a symbol for the region. Here at the French Institute for Agricultural Research, they're looking at ways of sniffing this insect out. Didier Rochat hooks a female red weevil up to his specially designed treadmill. The aim is to determine the direction the insect will walk in in order to catch it. For weevils, Didier has observed two chemical compounds will get them to come running. When he pipes in the smell of home, the palm tree or the scent of man, it's enough to turn this female around. Female weevils are attracted by the smell of the male. Males also react a bit to the male odor. But when we mix the two, the scent of the palm tree and that of the male, all weevils react very strongly and go straight for the source of the smell. The computer records the weevils walk. And with this, scientists hope that once they have confirmed the laws of attraction, they can catch the red devils by using nothing but odors. Adult weevils can travel half a mile in search of host trees, and females lay an average of 250 eggs at a time. The larvae tunnel to the centre of the tree and block any water or nutrients going to the crown. Crossing from Asia to the Middle East during the 90s, the red weevil is wiping out tree trunks across Europe. And it would appear has just been born in the USA.
what we've seen earlier in this show that you may not want bugs in your bed. However, they can be beneficial, rich in protein. They could be a source of food for the future. So I'm going to fry up some crickets now and put a few worms in the oven. And while I wait for those to be cooked, let's take a look at the range of edible insects available around the world. Eating creepy crawlies is a nightmare for many of us, but for half of humanity, insects are on the menu. Et voilà, bon appétit. We might have to get used to eating them for dinner. UN agricultural experts say they could play a key role in the future of feeding the world. People in Thailand eat scorpions, maggots and beetles as hors d'oeuvre. Mexicans, meanwhile, have long appreciated their nutritional value. Entomologists say there are more than 1,400 varieties of edible insect. Insects account for the vast majority of the planet's biodiversity, either in terms of the number of species or in sheer volume. There are millions of millions of tons of insects. Most birds, reptiles, fish, animals, vertebrates are right to feed on insects. People in parts of Africa suffer from too many insects. The clouds of crickets ravaging crops could weigh 400,000 tons. But it's impossible to eat them because of the use of pesticides. Insects are a source of proteins, vitamins and minerals, more so than traditional livestock. And while producing one kilo of beef requires 10 kilos of vegetation, a kilo of insects only needs three kilos of vegetation. Certain experts need no convincing. Insects are the future. Meat production requires enormous amounts of energy, water and land, and that's not the case with insects, which can be produced in much smaller areas and with a lot less water and a lot less energy. Insects are a resource for the future, an extremely important one, possibly vital for our civilization's survival. Insect foods are creeping onto the market. There are caterpillar lollies and ant chocolates. Yummy tummy. So now, time to taste. Mm -hmm. Crunchy, but not bad. And I'm told the crickets are a rich source of zinc, iron and calcium. So why not? Well, that brings us to the end of this week's show. A big thanks to everyone who worked in it, notably the girl on the other side of the camera, Valérie Labonne. Thanks also to our producer, Young Jim. Come on, Chapley, and I'll see you again next time. Mm.